Hello, everybody. We got a, a f full house here today. So uh, my name is uh, Owen Keary. I'm the current vice chair of OWASP. Uh, I'm from Dublin, Ireland. Hi, I'm Tom Brennan. Hi, I'm Jim Manico. I'm board member elect starting in January. Dave Wickers, and I'm going to be stepping up to the treasurer role uh, next year. So uh, welcome to uh, OWASP LAPSEC USA, yeah? Um, well, we're just going to cover off some aspects of OWASP, and uh, I suppose pretty much we'll get kicked off. So out of this huge crowd here, uh, who has never been at an OWASP conference before? That's pretty good. That's probably uh, why you're all here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And are we any volunteers or project leaders here at the moment? So um, let's talk about what OWASP is and who is OWASP. So in, in effect, OWASP is a global community that uh, drives the visibility of application security. So pretty much OWASP is, you know, the majority of people that have attended this conference today. Uh, obviously, it's a global organization. And, but like this, this particular conference is so big, it's, it's quite astounding. Um, in terms of, you know, just to give some guideline about OWASP, um, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's an open organization. Everybody's free to participate. And as we all know, all our materials are free. For example, I think mean, this week we had a bunch of free training. Um, all, the, all the material you've listened to and you will listen to today uh, will be freely available. Um, yeah, including that, we have, you know, lots and lots of tools and guides and stuff, and uh, there's lots of activity always happening in OWASP. Um, Finally, it, it's also a, a registered nonprofit, right? So, and one of the good things about it is that we're a bit, little bit more global than we were maybe last year. So, uh, in fact, we have a registered charity of 5013C. Oh, yeah. 501C3? Yeah. And uh, we're also now a registered charity in Europe as well, which is really cool um, because we're actually a real entity in Europe, which is uh, maybe to non Europeans, that doesn't really matter, but to me, it's cool, right? So. All right. <coughs> so, uh, in terms of you know, well, what is OWASP, I suppose, and what sort of, what does OWASP mean, right? It's the idea that, that our values are, are sort of people over profit, right? So, you know, we do generate revenue, and, and an or, uh, sort of an event like this is really important to the foundation um, because it, it, it gives us sort of uh, revenue to do stuff, to, to pay uh, for keeping the lights on, you know, to keep our website going, to, uh, fund travel for, for individuals to pay our, our employees over here. Hi. Um, and in effect, you know, it, it's, 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 it seems to be working as a really great model. It's, what, 11 years old now as well? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we have a few sort of core tenants to what OWASP is. The first one is we're open, right? So everything we do at OWASP is radically transparent, right? From our board meetings, if any of you ever um, want to attend uh, any of the board meetings, we have one every month. Uh, Anybody can dial in and listen, right? So we, you can listen about how the board, what we're discussing, uh, the directions we're going in. Um, and, and also we have board meeting minutes in the wiki, for example. So, so you know, anybody can sort of look at this information. Anybody can question it. And in effect, you know, we're radically transparent. Everything we do is open, right? Um, we're very innovation-based as well. So we encourage innovation, right? So we had uh, some involved with the season of code, the Google season of code this year, which was very successful. Um, you know, from the point of view of, of encouraging projects, anybody can set up a project in OWASP, right? So if you have an idea, you don't need to, um, there's, there's very little red tape. We have a, a new project manager, Samantha, there. And uh, so, you know, pretty much you just give Samantha a call and say, hey, I want to start a new project, and all of a sudden there's a wiki, bing, and there's a, you know, a page view, bing, and all of a sudden you can sort of start your project. and upload your code and share it around and get lots of other people to get involved. And, and we've been reasonably successful um, from the point of view of doing this type of thing. Um, we're also a global organization, right? So we have Apps at USA. This is normally the biggest conference we have every year, uh, thanks to you guys. Uh, we have AppSec EU next summer in Germany, which is normally pretty big as well. And then we have a bunch of other sort of regional conferences as well. And uh, the idea, uh, you know, one of the things for me for OWASP is that, um, uh, you, you know, when you go to security conferences, it's full of security people, right? And uh, what we try to strive to do is to, is to get developers in, get people that maybe aren't so familiar 
with, with uh, secure application development or software security. Um, for example, we had a, myself and Jim had a training class on Tuesday, and we had about 110 people in there, and 90% of them never even knew about OWASP, right? So that was really cool. And they, when they left there, I went, wow, what is this thing called OWASP? Wow, what is this thing called vulnerabilities? I need to figure out, is my, is my code secure? Um, you know, so yeah. And I think the key thing about the training we delivered on Tuesday is we had 110 people, and we did it, we did it for free as a courtesy to the community. You know, I see OWASP as like a Red Cross. We're supposed to be a charitable organization, so to, to, to see us do more free services just to raise awareness, I think we want to do more of that. I think it's a good thing for the organization. Great, so. All right, great, so hi, uh, my name is Tom Brennan. Um, so uh, OWASP by the numbers, I think this is usually enlightening for some of the new folks that aren't uh, well aware of the organization's kind of global reach. Uh, but from a numbers perspective, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of things going on in the organization, right? We have about 88 different companies involved uh, in for uh, our, our what we do. The citations that are put out there by things like PCI Council, ASESA, um, FFIEC, there's many organizations that have referenced materials that have been done by you uh, that have been contributed to the organization as best practices, vetted by peers, and become sort of a industry standards uh, or best practices. Uh, with about 30,000 participants on mailing lists around the world, we're kind of, you know, big and sometimes very virtual. So it's very quick and easy to jump on any mailing list, uh, talk about a particular point topic that's a mailing list hopefully set up for that purpose, uh, or in general the OWASP leaders list or any of the other sort of mailing lists that are out there. And of course, conferences is where we can save emails and actually get things done and talk in person and try to move things forward very quickly. That happens here a lot. Um, about 250,000 unique site visitors, right? This is unique because on a monthly basis, there's lots of new folks coming to the website, which is great. Lots of old folks coming back and making changes. That's great, too. Uh, but as we continue to grow over the last 11 years, perpetually, we have a lot of, a lot of motion, certainly a lot of views. Uh, with 800,000 uh, uh, page views every month, it's, it's considerably uh, a very well-traveled website. From our download side, right, we look at what's currently being downloaded from our tools, our documents, our products, et cetera, and about 15,000 downloads. These numbers are, um, I, I would say, small. And this is because we have different spots for different downloads, right? There's folks that are putting things on sites for that particular project. You got things in GitHub, you got things in Source, Forge, et cetera. There's different places. So tracking this is unique, but there's a lot of activity. From a membership perspective, uh, today we have 2,081 members, so thank you. Uh, what this really does as a member, as an individual, is kind of in your career as being a part of the organization. You know, this is our organization, so we appreciate your support uh, and certainly your involvement uh, in making this successful. With 193 active chapters around the world, you know, it's kind of in growth mode. Um, some chapters are small, some chapters are local meetups. Uh, for those that uh, are part of those local smaller chapters, that's fantastic. Hopefully the AppSec US uh, events or the AppSec events around the world are used as regional events to get your teams together or get the different folks together. It's nice to see a, a big, large contingent of a chapter and their members coming out to big regional events, uh, and it's continuing to grow. From a budgetary perspective, about $591,000 is the budget for, for OWASP Foundation, right? Lots of different things go into that, from employee staff costs, as was mentioned before, uh, to going ahead and driving different projects, initiatives. Um, so there's, it's a very healthy organization at this time. With over 113 active projects, right? There's quite a lot of activity happening here, from the well-known projects like the OWASP Top 10, headed up by Dave and Jeff Williams, to many others. Uh, there's a lot of active projects that are out there. We look forward to seeing many more from the community you know, put into the OWASP sort of world. About 55 paid corporate memberships. These are organizations that, uh, as I, I guess I'll call it a trade association, find uh, alliance with OWASP, like our values, our ethics, uh, the, what we stand for. Uh, and these organizations, you know, it wouldn't be possible to help run an organization this big worldwide without their support. So many of them are outside, which is great. Uh, and certainly there's many more around the world that support the organization. What's unique, I think, in the last two years that I've seen personally is I've seen more and more industry organizations step in. I've seen like UPS, I've seen FedEx, I've seen Best Buy, I've seen other providers that are not um, you know, in the widget world or in the services world, but are more from the corporate support world. So the more of that certainly is, is nice. Academic supporters, about 53 now. 53 around the world is great, so all the universities that we've attended, uh, it's very good to go back to these organizations as to your alumni and talk to them as to what the organization brings to the table, right? As an individual, whatever you do, I say in OWASP is with you for life. Uh, and that's a good thing, because many times, you know, we, we all work on NDAs, right? So a lot of times we don't have the opportunity to work on projects publicly 
that we touch on a day-to-day -day basis in our, let's say, our day life. But it's good to have individuals uh, in their spare time or people coming up through the space that want to work on a project and have that stick with them for the, for the rest of their life. It's probably really good that, you know, for your CV or for your, uh, your public presence to be able to turn around and say, yeah, I worked on this OWASP project that's being used around the world, whatever it may be. And that's a good reference point. It helps, you know, peer development. And as mentioned before, you know, we've been in service now about 11 years. So October was our birthday, if you will, which was great. Right? So the history here is continuing to grow. And as we continue to evolve, you know, there were times in the past that a conference was nothing more than we're going to meet up here at a location, come present. There's no large, you know, there's no, there's no big hotel, there's no food, there's no gift cards, there's, there's nothing of structure, but we've matured quite a bit and we continue to do that. Touching on the global AppSex, about four of them are happening around the year. These are the ones that we focus on regionally, right? We focus on the ones at AppSec USA for the North America space, Latin America, Asia Pac, and EMEA. Of course, these are our regional sort of get-togethers. Uh, and for those that don't know, uh, the, the great content that was here is recorded, and then probably within a week or so, it'll be live. So if you missed any sessions, uh, you'll be able to get them for free online, unlike other conferences that sell their material. Um, and then, of course, if any of the uh, useful presentations are good, we hope you, you know, get them out there for other people to view online. We'll take on the, Dave, we'll take on the staff. So we have uh, employees, which is great, because <laughs> uh, I've been involved for almost the entire 11 years. And uh, we did a lot of work all on our own. And, and, and again, most of what OWASP is done and what they accomplish is mostly done by volunteers. But the fact that we do have a budget, as you saw, and can afford to have employees, that most of them are sitting over there, uh, really keep the wheels running and make it really easy uh, for people to participate. I mean, the main thing that we focus on now as the employees and the, and the staff is to make your participation in OWASP as simple and easy as possible. Lower the barrier. So if you want to contribute your time to a project, you can focus on the interesting stuff about doing the technical work of the pro product or the document or whatever and not have to deal with, well, this big barrier of being a pain to start a project and, and get things going, get mailing lists and things like that. So um, we've got uh, three full-time employees. Um, Kate Hartman, who's been here for how, four, five years, six, ten, six, <laughs> since 2008. So she's here here four years, which is amazing. And, um, and she uh, is, does all kinds of stuff. I'm, there's a lot of bullets here on each person. I don't want to go through that those in detail, but uh, uh, she's been uh, around the longest as, as our full-time employee. And then Sarah joined us uh, recently. She obviously she did a huge amount of volunteerism for OWASP uh, first, and then came on as an employee. And uh, she uh, she works with uh, Kate uh, on a lot of things. And then uh, Samantha also recently joined us, as we mentioned, as a project manager to help uh, those people who want to participate in projects. I got an idea, but I don't know the OWASP world. What do I do? Oh, well, I'll set you, I'll guide you, I'll set up your project, set up your mailing list, introduce you to other people that might be interested in your project so that you can start building a community around what you're doing and, and uh, do, do more interesting things that way. And then we also have uh, two uh, part-time, whoops, two part-time employees. Allison, uh, actually, Allison had Kate's job uh, originally. She was our first person who was a full-time director at, at OWASP. And then she decided to transition to a part-time role uh, at her choice. And uh, so, so now she just does the accounting like a day and day and a half a week um, and takes care of that for, for the foundation. And then Kelly has also recently joined us as a part-time employee. She's in the New York area, I believe, New Jersey, yeah. And uh, she uh, is helping out uh, with her role as well. So I just want to thank, first off, the, uh, the employees. I mean, they do a huge amount of work. It's mostly silent and invisible, so the community of 30,000 people that participate in OWASP really don't really understand what they do for the most part. Uh, some of us certainly do, uh, but I want to give them a round of applause because I think they do more work than anyone here. So just some quick stats, uh, and then we'll uh, wrap this up because I think we're probably close to running out of time here, right? Um, okay, 10 minutes. So, um, the, uh, the board has a set of goals that we've been working on in 2012. We've, we've achieved uh, uh, most of those goals that we set out to do. Um, we have still all kinds of, of things we want to accomplish. Most of the barriers to accomplishing things at OWASP are simply who's willing to volunteer their time to make that thing happen or to get some energy and then get 
half a dozen or a dozen other people energized to also contribute together to make something happen. So for example, this conference, right? That's how all these conferences work. The guy, these conferences happen because someone raises their hand and says, I want to do a bunch of work for free to have a conference in my city or whatever. And then they somehow get 20 or 30 other crazy people to say, yeah, I want to do a bunch of work too. And an event like this happens. And it's the same thing for projects, on, not on the same level of scale, but that's how it works. So it's really about the volunteerism and energy. That's how things get done. So um, we've got a bunch of uh, uh, mailing lists. So we're, we're, a lot of what OWASP about, of, of course, is outreach. So we've got the conferences, the chapters. Uh, we're also doing a security blitz that Michael Coates launched to try to pe get people aware of things. Um, the, these are the conferences that we talked about. Uh, we also have, uh, there's a lot of regional conferences as well. Uh, some of the, the conferences that people volunteer to do a conference, like AppSec DC or whatever, they s decide they like it so much that they want to have a conference every single year from then on. So then they keep having a regional event every year. Um, and there are, there's dozens of these around the world. For example, the Israeli chapter has had a regional event there for, I don't know, eight years or something like that. So uh, this, this uh, growth of these, these community events all over the world is just, is just amazing. Okay. All right, great. Great. And then, um, you know, like any good organization, right, there's uh, appointed leaders and there's elected leaders, right? There's folks that you uh, look at kind of what they want to do with the organization, their passion behind what they do, and trying to go ahead and push the organization forward, try to actually solve problems, right? Because we're not really a conference organization. That's not what we're about, right? We're our, our job, our our mission is to raise visibility for security, and with the folks that are on the board are hopefully the most passionate folks in, in, in the community, among others that are also help driving forces in the organization. So the election piece, uh, for those that voted, uh, thank you. But a little history here. So in 2007, we decided to implement a uh, election based on process and, and, and for people that are there. So what we did is we had first election uh, in 2011, or the most recent one, uh, Michael Coates, uh, who I think left this morning back to uh, back to California, uh, Dave Wickers and Sebastian uh, and Christian Heinrich were on the ballot. Um, so the way it works is that there's six board members, and every year three of them turn over, right? So they go for election. Um, so those three folks are obviously on the board for a two-year term. This year, uh, for 2012, Germanico, myself, Owen, Matt, and Justin. Um, so for those that were involved in that, we appreciate your support. Um, and then the next step is, since we're all board members, right, then how does this kind of really work? Is there different roles? Yeah, there is. Right? There's focus points based on, let's say, bylaws. But at the end of the day, we all equally put in ridiculous amounts of time to make the organization successful. So we try to help structure this a little bit. So moving forward for the next two years, as of 2013, Michael Coates will remain the chair of OWASP. For those that don't know, Michael is a very active participant at the Mozilla organization. Um, Sebastian. Sebastian is now taking over the vice chair, which was previously held by Owen. Sebastian's out of Belgium. He's an independent consultant, which works real well. Uh, Owen is going to put on a skirt, maybe be the secretary. Indeed, yeah. He uh, didn't like that role. That's why I'm busting his chops. Uh, and uh, Dave's going to step into the treasurer role, which is he's been a great uh, supporting person for a very long time, understanding kind of the finance, the process, the making sure things get paid and contracts get signed. Uh, myself uh, and Jim Manico will take an alternate role, which will help out in support of any of the other uh, projects or initiatives that are happening with the different board members. Uh, and both Jim and I are, uh, as most people know, very active in the community and certainly will jump on the opportunity to help out any way we can. So quick uh, summary on the upcoming events for those that keep track of this. So mark your calendars. We have some events happening. We are obviously we're all here, so we know about this one. Uh, but as we go down the, you know, on, the, on the track of where the events are around the world, there's an opportunity to present projects, right? If, you've, if you came to the event and you saw some talks and you were like, wow, that was a great talk, I have something to add as well. A lot of the call for papers are open around the world. So submit your talks, get on the agenda, uh, have an opportunity maybe to travel and meet some of the other philosophers around the world and exchange thoughts. But a lot of events are coming up around the world, including Seoul, South Korea, um, looking at Hamburg, Germany for our AppSec and Mia sort of focus. Um, it's very important that as the organization continues to grow, that with conferences around the world, it kind of brings us together, right? That's kind of the key piece. Uh, next year, the event that's being done here will be done in New York City. It was done in 2008, so kind of a repeat of that. Um, so with the events that are, that are coming on around the world, as you can see, there's lots of pods or pockets of folks around the world that are very active. And typically, this starts with chapters. Um, and of course, um, there's more and more around the world. 
Um, but at this time, like I said, with 55 corporate supporters, 53 academic supporters, it's important to kind of you know, thank them for their support of the organization and thank you uh, as supporters of the organization worldwide. Um, and that's really what the message is. The message is, is you know, this is a, an ongoing relationship with friends and peers and trying to move the, move the needle forward. So at the conclusion of this talk or any other talk that's happened over the last two days, you know, grab the speakers, grab the people involved and say, hey, I, you know, I'd like to help out or here's how I think we can improve. It's very, really important. Lastly, it's real simple to get in contact with us, as I've said. Please you know, step up, approach, come to your local chapter, get involved. And if you have a question you can't find an answer for, you can always go to the OWASP website, hit the Contact Us form. And that will go back to the team, and the team will review, kind of figure out you know, how we can best help you. We have a couple minutes for questions, so if there's any questions in the audience, we'll be happy to kind of field them up here. And then as things move on, uh, we hope that people will take the time to join you know, the calls on a monthly basis if you're interested, and kind of stay in touch with what's going on. So any questions from the, from the guys in the field there? Wow, great. Cool. All right, thanks. Thank you. Cheers.